can a Windows user survive on a Chromebook for a whole week? We're going to see. I am reacting to an article here in Digital Trends about a Windows user who switched to a Chromebook for the week. I haven't read the article yet. I'm about to read the article and I'm going to let you know what my thoughts and reactions are as I go through it and share with you my thoughts on everything Chrome for this Windows user. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Pete Moriarty. We run a channel helping businesses systemize, organize, and scale using Google Workspace and a suite of best practice technology tools. But we're also a Google partner and we're experts in everything Chrome and Chrome OS. And so if you're running a business, scaling a team anywhere in the world, we can help you with everything in the Google ecosystem. And let's dive in. This is by Arif. Thank you so much for the article. Chrome OS has always piqued this person's interest as an alternative to Windows. Chrome is something entirely different, interesting. It's lightweight, efficient, and ships with the ability to run almost any Android app. I will say that. It's it's interesting that they've said, you know, unlike Mac that does kind of the same things as Windows. I think I think Windows and Mac are still pretty different these days. You're like, yes, you can still buy Microsoft Office for both of them. Yes, you can still get, you know, apps that, that work on most of them. But I, I still do think that Mac OS has a little bit of an edge for digital media. It's really, you know, still designed to really, really excel at producing content if you're a you know video or audio or graphic designer of some sort. And you know, just the way the OS is designed to me, in my opinion, still remains a little smoother and a little more stable than the Windows operating system. But Chrome OS, uh, yes, is in a league of its own. It still has an operating system of sorts. I mean, I'm sitting here on my Chrome box currently that you're looking at right now. And so you can see, you know, it's 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 got a menu down the bottom. It's 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 got tabs up the top. Like it's still the same kind of thing that you would expect on a uh, on a on a pretty normal computer. But obviously, it's primarily just a Chrome browser. It's it's you know very different to using a desktop machine that allows you to install local apps. On, uh, on those computers. So the author has recently reviewed a Chrome base all in one, which is kind of like the Google equivalent of an iMac or the Chrome OS equivalent of an iMac. And um, I happen to be using an Asus Chromebox 3, which is a pretty cool uh, feature. And this person said that they liked the Chrome base so much, they spent a few extra days uh, with this being their main machine, delaying returning to Windows and here's what they came up with. So yeah, well, I love that they've started here. Spending time in Chrome, Chrome OS gives you efficiency. You know, obviously, yep, they're right. Works great as a Chrome browser and that's good for workflows. But I think what my opinion is on that is that Chrome is very efficient because it's very simple. Chrome OS, that is. You, you don't have, you know, distractions with pop-ups, with bloatware and different apps popping up all the time. You don't have any virus that you need to install, which is going to be updating and scanning and doing things in the background. You don't have all of the, you know, normal kind of like annoying system prompts that would normally pop up on Windows. Um, I know because I still have one gaming computer that runs Windows, you know, that would normally kind of uh, pop up and bother you. So in terms of workflows and efficient work, it's very low distraction. And that's one of the things that I really, really like about Chrome. Uh, you can also see here that uh, it is very efficient machine in terms of power uh, consumption and performance. And so seven tabs open, they had a Core i5 with eight gig of RAM and that was chugging along nicely. Now, I wouldn't say that would be pushing that machine. Uh, that's going pretty easy on that machine. Eight gigs of RAM goes a long way with Chrome OS. Um, I can happily have 10, 15, maybe up to 20 tabs running pretty nicely with eight gig of RAM. Um, although I do have the i7 model, which has a little bit more oomph, but you will find that they will start to slow down if you're doing like graphics intensive tasks uh, because they're not, you know, really designed much as, as graphical powerhouse. So this is not the kind of machine that you would use for, you know, video editing or graphics editing, unless you were doing it in the cloud using an app like Canva, uh, perhaps. The key difference there is, of course, it doesn't have to run a full blown operating system. It's, it's, primarily just running a kind of Linux shell and then it's just running Google Chrome. So there isn't all the other bits and pieces of an operating system that would normally be needed for the processor and the resources of the computer to be working on. Okay, so they're using PWA, which is progressive web app versions of their apps. So you can see that Word and Excel are there. So you can use the online versions of those and that gives you access to those tools via the browser. But the other thing that's pretty cool is if you didn't already know, you can use Microsoft Word and Excel documents in their native format 
right inside the Chrome browser, inside of Google Drive. So if you're a subscriber to Google Drive and you're using the business version of Google Workspace, it may work in Gmail, but I'm not 100% sure. What you can actually do is open them in their native format and then work with the Microsoft DocX format or XLSX format, and that gives you access to those documents as well. Now, you're not gonna have all the same buttons and features that you do have in the native Microsoft apps, but myself personally, I find that they are enough to get you out of trouble. Next up, they are making use of Android apps with Chrome OS. You can use them in you know, tablet form, whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Xbox gaming, Subway Surfers. I don't really use these much for gaming, to be honest. Personally, I don't have much of a use for Android apps in my business life. So when I'm sitting at my Chromebox and I'm working away, I'm not often opening them. Uh, one challenge that I do have is that on my machine, every time I launch an Android app, it actually switches from 60 hertz output down to 30 hertz output. The screen goes black, it pops up and actually changes my display to be 30 hertz, which is uh, pretty frustrating because it doesn't look, doesn't look very good anymore. And so the challenges that I have there personally are that I Stand, tend to stay away from Android apps, but that's of course my personal circumstance. There's a few nice things you can do if you're working on your machine and maybe you're offline because you're sitting in a cafe. We'll actually give you a little prompt to connect to the hotspot on your phone, just like Mac OS does if you've got multiple iOS devices. That is very cool. There are also some features, but you know, determine on what account you've got to be able to automatically unlock your Chromebook based on your mobile device being in range within Bluetooth. And so, I used to run an Android phone. I obviously use primarily Chrome devices and I really loved that feature of being able to just click my profile picture and automatically have my machine unlocked. However, I got sick of Android and I went back to iOS and unfortunately I no longer have access to that feature. The next thing the author talks about is battery life and absolutely Chrome OS is far, far superior to any other machine I've used when it comes to battery life. They, you know, really last a seriously crazy amount of time and, um, you know, not only have they mentioned booting up instantly, that's, yep, that's really nice, but the actual battery life lasts a long, long time. Again, that's because you're running an operating system which is really only running a browser and that's about it. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Unless you're, you know, doing a big file upload and really smashing the, the bandwidth of your network port on your machine, either via Wi-Fi or via a dongle of some sort, it's gonna last for a very long time. And if you're doing web browsing and working online, working in Google Docs, anything in the Google ecosystem is going to be optimized to work well with Chrome OS devices. So if you're someone who uses Google Workspace or a lot of Gmail, you're gonna find that it works very, very well for you in those apps, both online and offline as well. Okay, so here is the bad. Here's the things that didn't work well for them. App compatibility. Yeah, well, that one's pretty obvious. You're not running Windows and you're not running Mac. So there's not many people who have actually developed and built dedicated apps. And so it looks like they had a problem where they couldn't download the Android versions of Office apps. Never had that issue. Always been fine for me, always been fine for our customers. And uh, that, that's why they were stuck basically using the, the web app versions of Microsoft. I still find that that some Android apps can be a little bit janky on the Chrome box or Chrome book. It's not an amazing experience, but they are there and they are available. One app I do use from time to time is the Authy app. And so I actually use that as a code generator. And rather than running to grab my phone, um, I actually use that as a second factor device. It's cheating a little bit because you should really have it on a second device. But on my work machine where I'm sitting down, um, that gives me options to access all of my two factor verification codes. There's a couple of funny ones here, like no date and time in the system tray and no caps lock key. Well, that depends which Chromebox or Chromebook you are using. I also happen to use a Logitech keyboard, so I've definitely got a caps lock one there, but you've got some options, uh, some options there. One more thing that sucks is the file manager. Do I agree with that? I'm not sure. It's, it's okay, it's okay. It gets the job done. I think there could be a couple of improvements to that to help get things running a little bit smarter. The author here has complained that it doesn't have a documents folder. Completely understand that. Google pretty much want you to leave everything inside Google Drive or have any local downloads on the machine automatically synchronized to your Google Drive, which you can do via a policy if you're using Google Workspace. Remember, these, these machines are designed for primarily for workers to pretty much be throwaway devices. Um, they're designed to be little to no maintenance or repairs or any overhead for your help desk staff. And so what that means is they don't really wanna have to be dealing with a large local documents folder sitting on the actual machine that someone in IT is gonna have to worry about people backing up. You can click one button in 
Google Workspace Admin and have all of the local documents on the machine backed up to each user's Google Drive. So anytime files are created locally on a Chrome device, uh, you can have, have them automatically synchronized and saved to that user's Google Drive folder, which I believe is a great feature. Here's what they consider to be the ugly. Okay, cool. So uh, they tried video editing. Oh, you must be new here. <laughs> you must be new. No, we don't edit videos on a Chromebook. We just don't. Google have actually uh, said that Luma Fusion is being brought to the Chromebook, uh, which it looks like they've uh, mentioned this in the article here. And so we will see what happens with editing on Chrome. But yeah, it's been pretty uh, pretty darn average up until now. And you know, it's, it's just not really something that they excel at at all due to the fact that some of the processes are slower they tend to have less resources and the graphics are, are just not really that strong on these machines. As they say, yes, Chrome has grown far beyond its early days. Uh, they are now machines that can go right up head to head with Mac OS and Windows, but we still find that some businesses will take their time deploying them because they wanna make sure that it's a great experience for their staff. Don't get caught thinking that, oh, what if I need to just install that one app on my machine to discount going with Chrome OS? It's an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal operating system, particularly in a business scenario because it gives you access to lots of amazing management tools and it's very, 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 very low resources required for actually supporting these machines. So if you're a business owner and you wanna look at reducing your IT costs, if you're a IT manager or IT leader and you're considering going Chrome, then yeah, please make sure you don't discount the Chrome experience. No matter what you've heard about it, there are plenty of advantages to going Google. So I wanna say thank you very much for this article. Uh, Arif, great to see more articles being written on the Chrome world. If you want to learn more about us and our channel, click through to our channel and hit, hit subscribe. Uh, if you did like this content, give me a big thumbs up. I'd love that. I would love to know your thoughts as well. Drop them down in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.